Thanks for tuning in. This is Stomper B Thompson, and in this video, I'm going to ride this 2022 Honda CRF 125 FB B for big wheel here at Tasker's Gap slash Peters Mill Run in Virginia. But real quick, before I get to all the the riding footage, that's what that video is all about. I'm going to very quickly run through why I bought this bike, the likes, the dislikes, and go over the modifications that I've done to it so far so that an adult can ride it. I've got a more in-depth video that covers all that stuff, but here's a quick lightning round. I bought this bike because I wanted a play bike, not necessarily a full-on pit bike. I do have a KTM 300 XCW two-stroke. That's what I ride around for when I'm really having fun and when I'm racing and stuff but I wanted something that was playful, that I could throw around, toss around on the trails, ride in smaller areas. It's also extremely quiet. And I just wanted something that could also kind of ride trails for real. So that's why I went with this bike. So my likes for this machine real quick are that it has Honda reliability. It's also a Honda, so it has a lot of great parts availability should you need to replace anything. On top of that, the aftermarket support is really good. It's also fuel injected. I'm not anti-carb by any means, but fuel injection is just nice to have. It does have a keyed ignition too, and it has a kick up back start. So my list of dislikes is pretty short, but important in my opinion. It has a four speed transmission. It could really benefit from a five speed. Uh, I, I'm happy with the spread, you know, the bottom of first and the top of fourth, but it'd just be nice to mix in another gear to make things like hill climbs a little bit easier because oftentimes you're between gears. The next dislike would be this rear drum brake. I wish it had a disc brake. This thing works just fine. And yeah, sure, it's easy to maintain and a drum is reliable, but man, you just cannot modulate it like you can a disc brake, which makes more aggressive standing and riding a little bit tougher. And then the last two dislikes I have are that the kickstand is just too short. If you're on off camber terrain and you're looking for a spot to lean this up so it doesn't fall over, sometimes it can be tough to find. I wish they would have made it a half an inch to an inch longer, but no big deal there. And then lastly, it's kind of heavy. Sucker weighs 200 pounds and it's completely stock form. No problem for an adult, but for kiddos, that's a lot of weight to be pulling around on the trail should you get stuck or something like that. So next I'm going to cover the modifications and again I'll do this in a lightning round fashion because I've got a video that explains them a little bit more in depth. Uh, but in the lower left hand corner of your screen I'll try to link as many products in the tag portion as I can. Otherwise I'll just put them in the description below. But here's all the mods I've done to it real quick. So the first set of mods I took care of were the handlebars. The sock handlebars are okay for regular trail riding, but I wanted something a little wider, taller, and stronger. So I went with these Tusk 110 pit bike handlebars from Rocky Mountain ATV. They're just the same width as my KTM 300 handlebars that come stock on that machine. Uh, I also went with these ODI 2 or ODI version 2 Rogue MX lock-on grips. You'll have to get a different throttle tube and cam in here if you want to run these. But again, that's all in my other video. I also put these little donuts on. And I've got these Acherbys X Factory wraparound handguards. And then I did put a kind of a hodgepodge light system on here. Connects straight to the battery. So I've got a waterproof switch. I've got a tiny little light bar and a little mounting bracket that hooks up to these handlebars. That's just kind of nice to have at nighttime for that kind of riding. The stock tires that come on these bikes are perfectly adequate for regular trail riding, especially for like a kid. But if you're going to be riding aggressive at all or any type of sloppy, messy terrain, then you're definitely going to want to upgrade. I bought these Tusk MX T35 uh, soft terrain compound motocross tires. They actually sell them in, the, in this 16, 19 size, so that was really nice. For way less than 100 bucks, I got a front tire, rear tire, and severe duty tubes front and rear as well. That kind of zaps the power a little bit, but in my opinion, it's worth it. So to make this machine a little bit more friendly for adults to ride, I'm six foot tall, about 190 pounds. I did put this BBR aftermarket seat on. It's got some extra grip in it, sewn into it, and it's about one inch taller than the stock seat. That just kind of opens up that rider triangle, especially with these taller handlebars. And then uh, I added on these foot pegs. These are DRC wide foot pegs. They are much bigger of a footprint than the stock ones, and they have a lot sharper teeth. So these have been very grippy and durable so far. 
The next really big modification I made was the suspension. So I put the BBR springs in, in the front forks and in the rear. The front forks was like a 10 minute job that was easy peasy lemon squeezy inside my garage. But with this BBR rear spring, I did end up having to take the shock out, out to a shop and have them compress it back on. But that adds about 30% more stiffness to it. The stock suspension's fine, especially for a kid. But if you're an adult really wanting to ride on this thing and maybe rip around kind of hard, you're gonna wanna do the springs. Next, I swapped out the shifter with this Tusk brand folding tip shifter because the stock one is just a cheap piece of steel with no folding tip. This one's gonna be tough to see, but for some more added protection, I put on the Ricochet Off-Road Aluminum Skid Plate. It offers much more protection for your starter motor with these welded on kind of wings on each side and for your just your transmission and everything. It still has a hole for the drain plug. And I also put on this plastic universal fit linkage guard from Tusk through Rocky Mountain. This just helps to protect your lower linkage and it just bolts up to any old skid plate that you have right here. You kind of cut to fit. It's a cheap, easy way to protect your lower linkage. And lastly, I added on this BBR chain guide. What comes here stock is essentially just a plastic fin. It's pretty strong and it'll help uh, protect the rear sprocket against like rocks and things like that and logs and stuff. But this is a proper chain guide that the chain runs through. Also, I swapped out the regular standard chain, which is really lightweight and uh, doesn't zap too much power from this thing with a heavier X-ring chain. So yeah, that's gonna be a power loss, but I'll take it because this chain just, you don't have to adjust it after every single ride, which I was doing with that stock chain. Maybe you've noticed that I've kept the stock exhaust on here. I did that on purpose. There's quite a few options that you can get. Full headers all the way back if you really want. They all sound really good and they're all somewhat affordable, but I'm sticking with stock just because it does have a, a uh, spark arrestor on there, which you need for places like this, Tasker's Gap. And also it's just a lot quieter, so that's beneficial for where I ride. It's a big old hill here. Holy, Holy shankies. That was rough, might have to do that again. Coming back up this.
Now see, this is where it's really hard to manipulate that rear, rear brake. Cool. Trying to bunny hop it. <laughs> Did I get it right there? Oh, bottomed out. Okay, so in conclusion, thanks for watching. This is Tasker's Gap and Peter's Mill Run. I had a lot of fun riding today, and I hope you liked the video. 
If you're gonna ride one of these as a heavier person or an adult, highly recommend getting them BBR springs in there at a minimum. Other than that, maybe some bigger foot pegs, but she's ready to rip. Obviously, I'm having a lot of fun out here. So thanks again for watching, everybody. If you got any questions about the machine that I can help answer, let me know.